Good afternoon uh, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Pankaj Shrest. I'm a structural engineer in GM2 Associates, Glastonbury, Connecticut. And in today's webinar, we'll talk about we'll talk about uh, our experience with Midas Civil, some of projects that we have done in Midas, then modeling of steel top girder bridge. Then we'll talk about the load application, then design load rating procedure, and uh, if we have some time, we'll also talk about load rating result verification that we did in this project. Uh, so we have been using this software for over two years now and uh, we have done multiple conduct projects uh, with, uh, in MIDAS Civil and we have performed different uh, very simple to complex bridges in MIDAS. Uh, some of projects that we have done includes bridge design, uh, load rating and some of complex bridge analysis. It's also our go-to program for quick analysis. Uh, some, some of our projects that we did in MIDAS includes uh, steel plate girder bridge uh, for construction stage analysis. We did a couple of load ratings such as uh, steel vascular bridge, open spandrel steel arch bridge. We also use this software for construction engineering such as check, uh, stability checks for demolitions. This is uh, one of our project. Uh, it had over 93,000 93, elements and had 17 steps of construction. Uh, and we use this, uh, in this project, uh, we did time-dependent construction stage analysis. This is uh, steel vascular bridge, and we use MIDAS Civil for 3D modeling and load rating of this uh, vascular bridge span. This is another project we then, uh, did in MIDAS. It is open spandrel steel arch bridge. We use this uh, project for finite, uh, sorry, 3D modeling of uh, bridge, and we also use the software for independent uh, load rating check. Okay, now I will talk about load rating of steel top girder bridge. In this project, we have been asked to load rate composite girders, cross pump members, in diaphragm, field splice, and decks. Uh, Midas Civil was used for load rating of composite girder, uh, but Midas doesn't have a feature to load rate cross frame and in diaphragm right now. So we use force and capacity evaluation for cross frame members and stress evaluation for in diaphragm. These results were later used for load rating of cross frame member and in diaphragm. Uh, it's different spreadsheets were developed for uh, load rating of deck and field splice. This is a general plan of simply supported uh, curb steel top girder bridge. It carries I-95 ramp over Lafayette Street straight in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Relatively, this bridge is small. Uh, the span length is around 100, 190 feet. This is a typical section of a bridge. Uh, here we can see both internal and external cross member members, and deck has a super elevation. In our model, we haven't considered this super elevation, uh, but we have considered other features like these varying hunch steps. This is a general framing plan. Here we can see uh, lateral top flange bracing as well as internal and external cross frame members. At both ends, at both ends we have in diaphragm. In this picture, in left hand side picture, we can see a cross frame inside a box girder, and right hand side picture shows uh, cross frame members, external cross frame members. In this, we can see internal cross frame member inside the box girder, and this one is uh, in diaphragm. Sorry, in diaphragm, uh, external in diaphragm. Now let's talk about the modeling of a bridge. So I'll go back to my model. So once we create these nodes using Midas Civil, uh, okay, this is this is a, uh, this is a model that in which I will use to explain. Okay. So, in this model, we have three types of material that has been used. One is composite material. Um, composite material is defined to define for uh, composite steel top girder bridge. So, in this section, we use SRC material as type of design, 
and we have to select uh, required steel and concrete property and Midas itself generates automatically generates material property as shown here. The other material that we need is steel material. Uh, we have used this material for cross frame and in diaphragm except steel girder and we have selected the steel material that we need and uh, Midas automatically generates these material properties. Then there is one more uh, yeah, material. I hope uh, many Midas users already know about this. Uh, this is a dummy. This is for dummy cross beam element. This is actually um, material wise this is a concrete material but uh, this, uh, this doesn't have any weight. To make sure like it doesn't have any weight, we have to change this weight density of concrete to zero. So I will we'll also talk about this uh, in a later portion of our presentation. Sorry, webinar. Okay. So now we'll talk about uh, uh, talk about our girders. Okay. So. In this model, we have we have model we have modeled this model with uh, two different types of elements. One is beam elements, and one is uh, plate elements. Plate plate elements were used to model in diaphragm, whereas uh, other elements such as uh, composite girder, cross beam members were uh, modeled using beam elements. This is an example of st composite steel top girder bridge. Uh, sorry, section. Uh, in this dialog box, uh, we can actually input slab dimensions uh, such as thickness of slab, hunch dimension, and uh, girder dimensions. Maybe I can change this to mm, it will be a lot easier. Okay. So, uh, this dialog box allows us to input uh, girder and slab, slab dimensions. And uh, after doing this, we can get the required section. Regarding the material property of the uh, of the uh, composite section, we can go to uh, select material uh, dialog box from here and select the required material property. So, uh, for example, for concrete, we, we can select our required material like this. It's very easy. Or if we have material information, we can manually input here. Uh, in our model, we also wanted to consider a creep effect. So we use multiple modulus of elasticity, and we have achieved that by changing this to 24. Initially, it was 8, around 8. And in our model, uh, anything concrete is weightless. And uh, to achieve that in our composite girder sections, we have changed this DS to DC ratio to 0. By doing so, um, the concrete used in composite girder will become weightless. OK. Uh, so let me show you our girders. So these are these two are uh, these two are our steel top girders. We, this one is girder one, and this one is girder two. Each girder, each girder has two different sections, as shown in here. Okay, and uh, right now, right now, we have two independent composite steel top girder sections as shown in this picture. They don't have any transverse continuity. So to maintain a transverse continuity of a deck, uh, to maintain a transverse continuity of a deck, we need to model a dummy cross beam element. Dummy, beam, uh, dummy cross beam elements are modeled as a beam element and these connects two girders and provides transverse continuity for the deck. The material used in this section is weightless concrete. Uh, now let me take you back to here. So for this element, uh, the section property is similar as that of deck. Uh, and material-wise, it is uh, so material-wise, it is uh, our weightless concrete material. Now I'll show you how I uh, model cross frame members. Uh, this is one typical uh, cross frame member. 
that we have modeled in our model. Uh, to model this cross prime member, we need secondary nodes. In my model, we have created this secondary node uh, relative to primary node, as shown in this picture. Uh, so once we create these nodes, we can connect with uh, respective uh, uh, section, and we will create cross prime member, as shown here. But right now, though we have this cross prime member, this is not directly connected with our primary model. To connect with the, with our primary model, we need to we have used rigid elastic links, uh, as shown in this picture. So we have drawn a rigid elastic link that connects primary primary nodes with first secondary node. Then we have a series of rigid elastic links that connects this whole node to with our primary node. In this way, we have created our cross prime member as well as connected this to our uh, primary model. Uh, in our modeling of cross prime member, we have used beam elements. Usually, uh, these cross prime members are modeled as truss element. Since we have used a beam element, we have to carry out in beam release, sorry, beam in release, as shown in this picture. So I will take you back to my model and show you my cross prime member and beam in release. Okay. So. So this is my model right now. We have steel girder and we have cross frame member inside it. Uh, let me take one section. This. Okay, so I will activate some nodes. Okay. Hi. So this is our primary node as I have shown in previous picture and we have created these nodes, secondary nodes uh, related to this primary node. And we created cross frame element. Uh, if we take one example for cross frame element, it's a basic section like T section, uh, basic section like T sections or angles. We have selected the required section property, uh, inbuilt section property, and we use that in this model. So once we create this model with uh, required section, all we have to do is to connect these cross frame member with our Midas model, primary Midas model, which is this girder element. So for that, we need an elastic link. This is this one. Uh, then, since this is a beam element, we ha we also need to do beam in release. So we have done that. Uh, we have three types of beam in release for our cross pin member. One is pin pin. And another is fixed uh, pin fixed, and other last one is fixed pin, pin fixed, or fixed pin. Okay. So at this stage, we have created uh, our composite girder. We have created our cross pin members, and uh, we have connected these cross pin member with our model using rigid elastic links, and. Uh, uh, we also did in beam release. So at this point, we have our um, uh, girder and cross beam members. Now let's talk about the modeling of in diaphragm. In diaphragm. Uh, Okay. So this is our in diaphragm. Uh, uh, maybe it will be a little easier if I show you my slides. Uh, so we have two in diaphragms, right? One is internal in diaphragm and one is external in diaphragm, as one in these two pictures. These were modeled as plate elements and steel material was used. Uh, we have uh, twin wave with stiffeners. If you maybe you can see here, they have one. Uh, we have stiffener inside a box girder, and in diaphragms, uh, uh, top flange of diaphragm was composite with a deck, as shown in this picture. Uh, and creating this in diaphragm is a little bit complex because we have a very complex geometry. We have lots of nodes. 
to ease this process, uh, we have to use AutoCAD file. First, we create an AutoCAD file with one face of in diaphragm with openings and required plate, uh, plate elements. So once we create AutoCAD file, we save it as a DFX file, which we later can import in Midas Civil. And in our case, we have uh, imported this DFX file and only taken these intersection point as our node. So with the help of DFX file, we got our first node for in diaphragms, which we later uh, copied and uh, copied and moved to create other uh, required nodes. Now let's. And this is next slide. In this next slide, we can see how we ca uh, connected our primary node with this in diaphragm. Right now, this uh, once we model this in diaphragm, it's a separate model. It's not connected with our primary model. So we have to do that using we have done that using Elastic Link. So our girder node was considered a primary node, and nodes of in diaphragm were considered as secondary or slave nodes. So we connected these slave nodes with our primary node using uh, rigid elastic links, as shown in this picture. At the end of this process, our model will look something like this. We have in a sorry, composite box girder, we have cross frame members, and we have in diaphragm. So we'll go back to our model. So this is our in diaphragm. And, uh, I will show you our link. This is our link. So this node is actually a node of primary uh, primary model, which is our uh, steel top girder, and we have connected this with our uh, in diaphragm. Uh, I just removed one face of an in diaphragm so we can see inside. Here we can see stiffness inside a box girder, oh, sorry, uh, in diaphragm. This stiffener was modeled as a beam element. So we just selected a uh, solid rectangle and input required dimensions. And the material wise, this is a structural steel. Structural steel, sorry. So, at the end of this step, we have box girder, we have cross frame element, and we have in diaphragm. And we also model our dummy cross beam element to have transverse continuity. Since we haven't assumed weight of concrete, we will apply weight of concrete separately. These are a few weights that we have applied in our model. One is self-weight of steel, which includes uh, weight of steel top girder, cross frame members, and in, the, in diaphragm. And we will also apply uh, weight, of, weight concrete load, as shown in this picture. Uh, we have also applied UDL, uh, sorry, torque applied on a member uh, uh, model uh, like this. We also applied a few other loads such as a load, uh, load due to hunch, miscellaneous steel loads that we haven't considered in our model. Uh, additional concrete loads, SIP form uh, workload were also applied. Uh, all these loads were applied over our girder. After this, we'll talk about uh, construction states. Uh, so let me talk about the boundary condition first. We have uh, unidirectional bearing support at one, sup one end, and we have fixed bearing support at other end. And uh, uh, we model this using springs, springs in our model. 
construction uh, we have four construction stages construction stage 1 includes steel erection steel structure erection construction stage 2 includes weight concrete placement construction stage 3 includes composite action in construction stage 4 we consider long term effect in construction stage 1 where we considered steel structure erection we activated uh, i hope many uh, some of our uh, participants know how to use midas uh, so maybe they are already familiar with this uh, yeah. so in construction stage 1 we activated uh, steel top girder cross frame elements in diaphragm and uh, and boundary conditions such as support condition uh, uh, elastic links and beam in release load wise we activated self weight of steel member and some miscellaneous steel weight in construction stage 2 we activated weight concrete placement so in this case, case our deck is not composite we haven't activated any new elements we haven't activated any new boundary conditions we only acti applied weight concrete loads if you remember that one is uh, weight concrete UDL and weight concrete torque in construction stage 3 we considered composite action. In this stage, we activated dummy uh, dummy cross beams, which provides uh, transverse continuity. Uh, we have also activated uh, uh, relevant elastic links. Elastic links. We haven't activated any new loads in this stage. In construction stage four, we have considered long-term effect on concrete property. In this stage, we haven't activated any new element we only change modular ratio in boundary condition we change our modular ratio from 8 to 24 and parapet and wearing surface lower were activated in this stage now we'll go back to our model uh, So for construction stairs, uh, as I have already told you, uh, it's really easy to manage construction stairs in Midas Civil. Uh, uh, in construction stairs, we have activated all the steel elements. If you want to activate any other elements, it's really easy. In Midas, we can just select the uh, element and we can edit. Uh, so. This is really easy. In construction stage one, we activated um, all the structural steel elements. We have activated relevant uh, boundary conditions and some steel loads were also applied. Similarly, in construction stage two, we activated weight concrete loads. Uh, we haven't activated any boundary or uh, we haven't activated any boundary condition, and we haven't activated any elements. Similarly, in construction stage three, we have uh, assumed in this stage. We assumed uh, composite actions, so we have we also activated uh, dummy cross beam elements because now the deck is composite and we have that transverse action is uh, is there now. So we activated this uh, dummy deck. We have also activated relevant uh, uh, rigid elastic links. And load wise, we don't have additional any additional load. In construction stage four, we activated parapet and wearing surface load. Uh, in boundary condition, we change uh, our modular uh, modular ratio, so that we have actually considering creep action in this stage. Element wise, we don't have any new elements in this stage. Uh, we can uh, this feature is very cool. We can see the different construction stages. In construction stage one, we have all our steel elements. In construction stage two. We have we have only activated um, we haven't activated any new elements, so we don't have anything here. But in construction stage three, we have activated our composite action, so we have this dummy cross beam element. In construction stage four, we have considered grip action, so we don't have any new element, but concrete property had changed in this stage. Okay. Uh, so at this stage, we have uh, we have created our model. We have all we now we also have our construction stages. Uh, we also applied our uh, different static loads. Now it's time for applying uh, moving loads. 
relatively, in my experience, uh, applying moving load in MIDAS is easier. Uh, there are basic three steps to apply moving load in MIDAS Civil. One is defining a traffic lane. Second step is defining vehicles, required vehicles. And third step is defining a moving load case, where we assign traffic lanes and vehicles. In this project, we had 15 trucks. Um, 15 trucks, two were design trucks, two were uh, legal trucks, and we had like 11 permit trucks. These four are critical load placements that we considered in our uh, load rating of steel top girder bridge. Each placements have two uh, uh, lanes as shown in these pictures. Uh, this is one of the example of uh, legal or permit truck. This is Connecticut 204A. This is a non-standard design truck. Uh, so let's go back to our model. Okay. So we basically we have three steps, right? For before that, uh, going to those three steps, we have to select a moving load case. Midas Civil has a variety of codes. In our case, uh, my ASTO LRFT is applicable, so we have selected this one. Uh, um, let me activate only girders. So these are two of our girders. Uh, and I'll also activate few nodes. Okay. So to define a moving load, first we have to define a traffic lane. So for each moving load case, we have two lanes as shown in this uh, right and left hand side. So if you go to a, uh, this dialog box, we can see one traffic lane. Uh, there are a variety of ways to apply traffic lane. Uh, in, in this, uh, in this uh, model, uh, I assign traffic lane relative to girder so basically we can uh, we just give a eccentricity or relative location of uh, traffic lane relative to a girder in my case it's like uh, 126 centimeter mm I will change this to feet it will be easier to see them. okay so yeah so by changing this eccentricity, uh, we can define a relative location of lane relative to a girder. And this is a wheel spacing of our vehicle. Uh, if we have more than one uh, girder, then in that case, for uh, vehicular load distribution, we have to select cross beam member, a uh, cross beam options. And for this purpose, we have a dummy cross beam element, right? And in our case, it is deck dummy which if you remember that's the uh, that's the element that we created the dummy deck element that we created before so so we we have this and we have created we have actually assigned so this is our example of placement 1 live load placement 1 here we have assigned uh, lane load and, uh, we have defined traffic lane related to girder one, and uh, traffic uh, other uh, traffic lane is defined related to girder two. So once we define this traffic lane, uh, the next step is defining a vehicle. Uh, if we if we have to consider uh, standard design trucks, uh, Midas actually have standard trucks. Only we have to do is to select. Uh, uh, our code for in this case is S or RFT. Then uh, Midas itself has a few options that is standard trucks option, and we can select any one of them. And it also has a place where we can input dynamic allowance factor. So this is for standard trucks. We don't have to change anything. But if we want to define a user define a permit truck, so the permit truck Midas doesn't have predefined permit trucks. In this case we have to use user-defined vehicular load and we come up with this uh, dialog box where we can define any number of axle and any number of uh, 
uh, loads. For example, this is our one of our permit truck. Uh, this is the spacing between two wheels, which is 11 feet, and the wheel load is uh, 11, uh, 11 kips. But in this uh, dialog box, uh, as you can see in this picture, we have to use only half of that, so it is, it is 5.5. The distance between uh, the, uh, the length of the axle is uh, 6 feet, so half is 3 feet. So we have like, this has like 6 axles as one in this. So yeah. So at the end of this stage, uh, we have defined traffic lane and we also define our vehicles. The next stage is defining a moving load case where we assign traffic lane and vehicles. Uh, so in this stage, uh, if I go from here, in this stage uh, what we do is just uh, select a vehicle, predefined that defined vehicle and uh, once we select this uh, vehicle, uh, we can add number of lanes that we need or we want to apply vehicle on it. So we have, in this case we have HL93 truck and we are using placement, we are using placement one, so we have uh, uh, these two lanes. For, for HL93 truck, we have assumed all four placement conditions. So for one, each placement conditions we have two lanes, two lanes, and we are uh, we are applying minimum one to maximum one lane loads. So at this at the end of this stage, uh, we have defined traffic lane, uh, moving load, and we have also created moving load case. Uh, so at the end of this stage, we can say like we have model a bridge. We have also uh, uh, created a construction stages. We, are, we have also applied moving loads. So now we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about uh, load rating, load rating, uh, and we also talk about analysis and design features of Midas. Okay. So for that we have this model. This is another model. This is the same model, uh, but uh, it has more elements. This is basically the same model that we use to load rate our bridge. Uh, okay, so for this load rating purpose, we have few steps that we have to do. So I will go through each steps. Uh, first step is selecting a code. In our case, it's as well as 2012, so we have selected this. Next stage is uh, selecting a parameters. In this dialog box, uh, either we can update by code or we can change as per our need. Uh, in this section, since we have two box order, we have selected multiple box sections. Then we have to go to uh, uh, this dialog box, which is bridge rating group setting. In this setting, we can actually uh, assign condition factor for each girder element. Since our girder is, uh, has only, uh, girder has condition factor one, so we have, all we have to do is to select girder and assign condition factor. For our case, it's one. If in a single girder, if we have like uh, some section are deteriorated and some are perfectly fine, in that case we may have multiple condition factor in the same girder. In that case, uh, for each uh, section of a girder, we can assign different condition factors from here. Uh, next is rating material. Uh, currently, for steel, steel girder bridge, uh, Midas allows on, Midas does only load rating for composite girders, composite material, sorry. So in this section, in material section, uh, we have to uh, assign a material which is SRC material, which is composite material, and we can also change material property at this location. So once we uh, assign uh, required material material property, 
It's done. So next step, step, step after that will be defining uh, rating cases. Uh, depending upon case uh, project, we may have different cases. For example, I will give you, we have like 15 trucks. So for each 15 trucks, we have uh, rating cases. I will show you one. Uh, sorry. Okay. For this case, we have we have assigned primary vehicle as SL93, and we have a rating factor here, which is 1.75. Similarly. Uh, we have other static loads, right? For uh, for example, DC uh, before and after that is uh, co uh, before composite and after composite. We also have this uh, temporary DW, which is um, wearing surface and prepared loads, and we can assign uh, we can assign maximum and minimum rating factors in this dialog box. We can select type of load from here, and we'll change our uh, uh, rating factor in this at this location. So for using this dialog box we can uh, come up with rating load combinations. Since we, uh, once we have rating combinations uh, uh, we have everything. But in this case our bridge is curved. So we have to provide one additional information which is curb bridge information. Uh, in our bridge, uh, okay, I'll open one simplified model, maybe it will be So, okay. so uh, in curb, uh, if our uh, if our bridge is state, we don't have to worry about this section. But if our bridge, if the bridge, if the uh, load rating of the bridge is curved, then in that case we have to uh, select the girder. For example, in this case. Uh, In this case, um, uh, let's go to a metro. Active. Okay. So, for example, if we want to uh, assign a curb bridge information, we have to select a, a girder first. Uh, we'll select girder A, girder one. In this case, okay. So we have selected a girder information. Uh, we have selected a girder. Then we have to give a radius. In this case, it is. Uh, 140 feet, uh, meter, so we we can select uh, we can we have to provide girder radius. Then type of curvature needs to be provided. For example, in our case, it's curved, so we just simply apply this. So this is one step that we have to consider if our bridge is, uh, is curved. Else, we can we can skip this step. Since we have already defined uh, design code, we have already defined parameters, uh, load rating cases. Now we can perform a load rating for composite girder. So let's perform a composite girder load rating. Okay, it has been performed. So let's take a look. Excel report. Okay, uh, this is a load rating. Rating. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is an example of load rating report. Uh, in our uh, simplified model, I considered only SL93 truck. So here we, we can see uh, uh, load rating for SL93, which is this for more based on moment for if. So if I have one load rating uh, report for complete model, which is basically the same. So this is, if we run our model uh, and perform load rating, we come up with this load rating report summary. Here we can see all the rating uh, load combination that we have defined and load rating for each conditions. It also uh, so in this case, uh, Critical location is element 39i. So we have a detail. We also have a detail report for that. In detail report, it prov Midas provides. Uh, in uh, detail report, we can see a capacity calculation, then dead load demand, live load demand, and rating factor calculation. So 
uh, Midas, currently Midas Civil has the capability to uh, come up with a load rating number for only composite girders, a composite section. It doesn't have any feature that, uh, that will allow us to do load rating of cross frame members and in diaphragms, uh, in diaphragms, but, uh, uh, but we can actually come up with uh, required, uh, required values to perform load rating of cross frame members. For example, in this still designed code, uh, to perform, a, to, uh, to do a steel design, we have to first select a steel code. In the RQS, it is LRFT 2012. And next step will be um, selecting a strength reduction factor from code. Once we fill this, uh, next step will be modifying uh, material property. So if we have to modify anything, we can do it here. These two are the uh, steel material that we previously defined. Uh, then after that, we can go to code check, and Midas will perform code check for all the steel elements. It also has um, Midas also provides a graphic summary report for steel code checks. For example, I will take one external diagonal bracing. This is a graphical report that Midas generates. Uh, here we can see like it it did all the unnecessary code checks, and it also have uh, member force information, member properties, uh, and we all we can also generate a detailed report here for our steel members. This is an example of detailed report where we can see a member forces, and it does all the necessary code checks for us. Uh, at this stage, uh, from this report, we can actually get uh, force acting on a member, in on each cross member members. And it also calculates the capacity of member, depending upon whether it's compressed or in tension. So we can use these two values, the capacity uh, calculation from uh, detailed report and force acting on those cross member members and we can, uh, based upon those two values, we can actually calculate uh, rating factor for cross member members. Okay. Uh, so this feature is very useful if, if, uh, if we are interested to do load rating for steel members. Cross member members. So next stage is, uh, next stage is uh, composite design. Uh, if we want to check, uh, if we want to code check uh, composite bridge element, for example, in this case, composite steel top girder. If we want to code check, we have to use this uh, feature. In this section, uh, first we select a code. Then uh, we have some resistance factors that we can modify as per our need. Uh, that's been according to our code requirement. Since our uh, girder has, bridge has two girders, so we'll choose multiple box girder section here. Uh, the next step will be define the uh, next section is composite material section. It's very similar as we talk, as in uh, load rating case. So this is a SRC material, and we can change material property from here. Similarly, we have to provide uh, load combinations since we have we have if we we, uh, we can use load combination from here uh, if we design this okay. so this is uh, previous So once we provide necessary information for composite design, as I shown before, uh, Midas Civil actually auto generate a very good, uh, uh, very good uh, report. In which we, as we can see here, uh, okay. provides uh, okay. Midas Civil actually generates uh, design report 
where we can see all the necessary uh, code checks has been done here. So this feature is very useful if uh, we are interested to uh, design check our uh, composite code. This is our composite code. So this section is also done. So uh, at this stage, uh, we already talked about the load rating. Uh, we talked about the rating steps. Uh, since we have lots of stuff to talk, so and time is very limited, so I'm going too fast. I I can understand, but as we have seen in here, uh, there are very uh, there are steps which are really easy to follow, and uh, Midas has. Um, Midas can perform a rating design and can also produce uh, excellent Excel reports for both rating and uh, composite design check. We can use still design menu for uh, uh, code, uh, code check of still members. These, this, uh, this feature is very useful if you want to do uh, load rating of cross member members. Uh, now I will talk about how I did uh, load rating of in diaphragm. Uh, for in diaphragm, uh, Midas doesn't have a specific capability that uh, gives you a load rating number for in diaphragm. So, in our model, in our uh, project, we use stress evaluation from Midas Civil, and we use that information to calculate uh, uh, to calculate our load rating for in diaphragm. So, let's go to in diaphragm. Let me activate in diaphragm first. So this is our model. Uh, this is our model, and uh, we have option which is plain stress and plain uh, plain stress option. So uh, we can choose any load combination from here. So for example, I am choosing uh, SL ninety three load combination. Uh, this uh, sigma effective is bone mass stress. We can also say it as effective stress. So, in our load rating of in diaphragm, we used bone mass stress uh, to calculate our load rating. So we can actually, uh, we uh, for different com combina load combinations, uh, we can come up with stress value for in diaphragm, and we can later use this uh, value for load rating because our uh, capacity of uh, plate is around 50 kips KS um, KSI and. Okay, and we uh, after that we can for different load count cases we can cal come up with uh, stress in plate elements. So using these values we can calculate load rating of in diaphragm. Let's show you one example. So this is stress distribution in in diaphragm. We can also see stress distribution based on construction stages for construction stage one, where we activated only elements. Our stress distribution looks something like this. Uh, we can also have uh, legends. So yeah, so. Uh, so basically, uh, Midas actually allows us to model in a composite uh, girders. Uh, there is a, in 2015 version of Midas, they actually included this uh, feature where we can model steel top girders. Uh, and uh, currently, Midas has the ability to load rate composite girders. Uh, but uh, uh, for load rating of cross frame members or in diaphragm, Actually, they have sufficient information here, so we can use that information to uh, load rate other elements. Uh, so, with this, I want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>